Quite a few of the YouTube channels are recently made impossible or floating table projects. These use a combination of a rigid structure and tensions cables to give the impression of a floating tabletop. In this example you can see that the tabletop is actually suspended by the central cable and the other cables act under tension to stabilise the top. This is known as tensegrity, a term originally coined by Buckminster Fuller in the 1960s which means tensional integrity. This was also called floating compression by Kenneth Snelson who in fact claimed that Buckminster Fuller took credit for his discovery. Although according to Wikipedia, Carlis Johansson's had made similar structures years before Snelson was born. Kenneth Snelson built various tensegrity or floating compression sculptures including the Needle Tower and you can find lots of pictures on Google Images. So rather than making another floating or impossible tensegrity table, I'm going to make some different structures using tensegrity which are similar to Kenneth Snelson's tower. But first let's look at the concepts. This is a simple structure with three rigid members that I 3D printed and added elastic bands to to provide tension. The top of all of the three sticks are attached together with elastic bands and so are the bottoms. The tops of the sticks are then linked to the bottom of the next stick with another elastic band and that means we've got nine elastic bands in total and three rigid members. The next example has four rigid members and that's exactly the same where the tops are all linked together with four elastic bands top and bottom and a further four elastic bands to link the top of each stick to the bottom of the next one. The tension provided by the elastic bands holds all of the four rigid members in equilibrium so none of them touch each other. In the next example I've got five rigid members and you can see the structures getting flatter each time I add an additional one. This is because my bands are all still the same tension and ideally I need a higher tension on the top and bottom to bring the ends of the sticks closer together. I decided to try stacking two four member structures together to make something similar to Kenneth Snelson's tower although I've got four members in each stage instead of the three that he had. This seems to work okay, it's a bit wobbly although that's mainly down to the compression in the elastic bands. If they were rigid tension strings then it would probably be much more rigid. I want to make something much bigger though so it's time for some bigger rigid sticks. I found these plastic pipes on eBay which are furniture grade PVC pipe. I also need some rigid cord so having opened the blind in my bathroom I discovered this handy chain which is quite tough because it has to roll the whole blind up and it's also got these little plastic beads on which engage with the gears. I found you can buy something very similar on Amazon on 20 meter rolls so I got a couple of those. That seems to be nylon cord which is going to be really tough. I 3D printed some ends to go on my tubes which are push fit and they also have these little castellations and a little ring around with some holes in to poke the cord through. This means I can tension it and lock it in place and it won't easily pull out. I 3D printed some TPU flexible ends that just push on and that means the cord won't pull out while it's slack and I'm assembling it and it also keeps it nice and tidy and makes feet for the structure. So now it's time to assemble all of those. I cut my pipes in half to roughly 630mm lengths and pushed all of the ends on. I did a CAD diagram to work out roughly what the structure would look like, what angles the sticks would be at and then I can measure the ends in CAD to find out roughly how long the strings need to be for each stage. Then it's just a matter of measuring them to length and cutting them and I made them about 50mm longer so there's some slack to go through the castellation and lock it into the end of the tubes. I assembled this stage by stage linking all the tops and bottoms first and making sure those are on opposite sides and everything hangs together a bit like a rope ladder. Next it's time to link the vertical strings to the corners from the top of one to the bottom of the other and that's where it gets a bit tricky and a bit muddly to go around in a circle. Once three verticals are fitted I found it is best to stand it on its end to do the fourth one and that means the structure almost stands up as long as you're holding on to it. 
There were a few issues to sort out, like some strings that I got tangled round, and I managed to rotate most of the tubes so that everything faced in the right direction. I found that my structure was a bit wobbly though, so I went round and tensioned up all of the cables, bit by bit, making sure they were all the same length, until I eventually got a fairly rigid structure. It was time to add the next stage, which involved removing some of the horizontal lines linking the tops and bottoms together, cut those in half, and fit another stick in between, and this is so we can fit the next structure balancing on those cables. Those got fitted back in, and I measured the ends to check that they were in the middle, and then I worked my way round doing all four of them. Now it's time to link all of the tops of those together and put the next set of verticals in, and as you can see that took me quite some time because there's nothing to balance the sticks on and they just fall over all over the place. <laughs> And here it is. So you can see it's actually quite wobbly, there's quite a lot of twist in it and it wobbles around like a giant spring. However, all my rigid members are suspended in tensegrity and all of my tension has seemed to work so the structure stands up without any of the rigid pieces touching each other. It was time to add the third stage, which I did in a similar fashion, but I'll spare you the funny music, and now we can see we've got the three stage sculpture with all of those members not touching each other, all suspended in tensegrity by the cables. It is very wobbly though, and it really wobbles and oscillates like a giant spring. It looks pretty good though, and I really like the top view, which is the view we saw originally from Kenneth Snelson's Needle Tower. I decided to try and get rid of all the springiness by adding some more tension cords, so I've made every stage into a triangle now instead of just having single verticals. I did this on all three stages, and I'm hoping that'll take out lots of the twist and lots of the spring. This has helped quite a bit to get rid of some of the twist in each stage, which allows each stick to cascade round in the direction it's facing. However, it is still quite springy because the stages are still just suspended on those strings around the top and bottom of each of the stages. As you can see, this still allows compression between the stages, which is where most of the wobble is coming from as the tower gets taller. So now each stage's tension accords make up two triangles. However, we can still see compression where those stages are balanced on the horizontal strings that turns the whole thing into a big spring. It makes sense to add some vertical tension between these stages, and that should stop the compression provided we do it on all four sides of the structure. So having added those, you can see it's pulled the structure down so the sticks aren't so vertical and they're lying flatter, but they aren't touching each other still so we still have a tensegrity sculpture, and the whole structure is much more rigid so you can see there's hardly any wobble in that now, it really is a very rigid structure. I considered going back and retensioning everything to make those sticks stand up more vertically as they were to start with, but I'm pretty happy with the way it looks and the structure's really good, so now I just need to find a practical use for it. I found these cupboard lights on Amazon which are movement activated. Each one comes with a magnet on the back for mounting, and also a magnetic plate with a 3M sticky pad on. Each one takes three AAA batteries. 
I wanted to make more diffused coloured covers for them, so that's what I was 3D printing. So I stripped the lights down so I can use the guts from these lights and mount them to the Tensegrity Tower. I made bases for them which I can stick the sticky pad to which is metal and sticks to the magnet and the base has a place to thread a zip tie through and a piece that fits perfectly on my sticks. These get zip tied onto the structure wherever I want them and due to the fact there's only one zip tie and the sticks are smooth I can move those all around and position them but I can also tension them up so they're pretty tight and stay in place. The lights stick on with their magnet and the 3D printed covers I've made just fit on and those are just a push fit and that light can still be moved around and aligned however I want it to be. These lights have a sensor in the middle so the movement activated and I left a place in my 3D printed diffusers so that sensor still pokes out and has quite a wide angle view. So I quite like the look of this. We could have of course put a tabletop on top and made a side table or something like that but I think there's enough Tensegrity tables on YouTube for now. So it's the first time in a while I've done a project which doesn't have coding or mechanical moving parts or electronics in it as such but I've quite enjoyed doing this project. It's been quite interesting to get this structure to stand up and make it rigid and have it look like something even if it is a bit of an experimental lifestyle product quite enjoyed doing a normal maker project this week and not having to worry about making a robot work but there's plenty more stuff like that coming up. Now there are robots that actually use Tensegrity as their structure so you can check those out on YouTube just by searching for Tensegrity robot mostly research machines but the point is they can roll all over so for something like exploring Mars or something like that they can handle rough terrain just by altering the lengths of those tension cords. So I do have another experimental robot structure coming up next week, so perhaps I'll come back to this. It would be really good if I did actually make a robot using a combination of Tensegrity and the thing that's coming next week. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see what that is and like the video if you liked it. Now I will publish all the 3D printed parts for this, the ends for these tubes, so you can use blind cord to make a similar structure, and these pieces for the lights. So if you'd like to support me on Patreon, then you can check out the link in the description of this video or YouTube channel membership. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos early, up to a week early, and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of all that discussion. So check those out. All right, that's all for now.